Hello everyone, and welcome to the third video in this series on procedural content generation in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, we're going to see how to avoid overlapping objects when you generate multiple meshes. In the very first video of this series, I gave you a very generic overview of bounds to get you started into using the plugin. However, in this video, I will give you a more detailed description of bounds. To show you how bounds work, I'm going to turn on the debug information on the transform ports. In the scene in the background, you can start to see the bounding information that appear now. I will also unlink the static mesh spawner from the transform points so we can clearly see the bounding information from the debug option. Now, as you can see in the background, we only have the debug information of the bounding points of each surface sampler. If I go in one of the surface sampler node and change the values of the point extents, this would change the size of all the points generated inside this surface sampler. I will turn off the values of the other surface samplers so we can focus on this one. Now, if I connect that back to the static mesh spawner, we can see what the static mesh will spawn inside the bounds. What you need to keep in mind is that the bounds of your surface sampler should fit and match the size of the objects you want to spawn. Now, if I change the points per square meter value, I can decide if I want more objects per square meter or less. So here, if I give a higher value, you can see that I spawn more objects. I will now turn off the values for the barrels and focus on the small crates. In here, you can see the values of my bounds match the size of the mesh. However, in some situations, that might not be the case. So if I give it a smaller value here, like for example, then, you can see that we have an issue here when the static meshes sometimes overlap other static meshes. As I mentioned before, we can fix this by changing the values of the bounds. But here we also have another problem. Some of the bounds overlap other bounds. Here we have a simple fix for this kind of situation. We can use the self pointing node to fix the problem for us. This will remove the bounds that overlap each other in the surface sampler. Now, if I change the debug information from the transform points to the self pointing node, all the overlapping bounds were removed. And as I mentioned before, if I turn back the static mesh spawner on, then you can see that some of the meshes are overlapping each other. But this is because of the bounds that are too small. If I change the value back to what it was before, the problem is gone. Now that we solved the problem for one of the surface sampler, you might wonder, what about if I connect multiple surface samplers? In here, if I allow the debug information of the transform points on the second surface sampler, you can see that some of the bounds are already overlapping with the bounds of the first surface sampler. You can also see that the bounds here matches the size of my mesh, which is a wooden pallet. If I only show the meshes here, we can see that some of them are overlapping with the boxes from before. To fix this, we can use another node, the difference node. This node will make a difference operation where you can choose the information of the source and the information from the difference to allow some of the bounds to remove other objects from a different surface sampler. In here, if I connect the boxes to the source and then my wooden palettes to the difference, you can see that uh, the result is not really working. What I actually want here is the wooden palace to act as the source, and then the boxes as the difference. Now, you can see that the wooden palettes are not on top of the boxes. However, there's still some overlap happening sometimes. There's a simple fix for that. You need to change the density function you use in the difference node. By default, this is using the minimum function. What works better here for our situation is the binary function. Once you do that, you can see that a lot of the wooden pallets were removed because they were overlapping with some of the boxes. Finally, I have another surface sampler in this graph, the barrels. By showing the debug information, or by showing you the static mesh, we can see that some overlapping is going to happen again. As you can see here, one of the boxes is overlapping with one of the barrels. Once again, the solution here is to use the difference node. As we saw before, what I want as the source here is the mesh, which is, in this case, the barrel. 
For the differences, I want the result of the previous operation, which gives me the correct wooden pallet. Then I will connect that into this difference node. But I also want the boxes from earlier. To do that, I will also connect the boxes from earlier into this difference node. So now we have two elements in the differences option, the result of the difference operation that we done before, and the boxes from earlier. Make sure to get the binary function once again, and then you can connect the difference node back into the static mesh spawner. As you can see here now, there's no overlapping objects in this scene. However, if you look a bit closer to some of the objects that were spawned, you can see that two of the wooden pallets are very close to each other, almost intersecting. To fix that, there's a simple solution that we already saw before. You can connect a self prune node to the wooden pallets. Make sure to connect the self pruning node after the transform ports and get the results back into the source of the difference node. Now, there's no more overlapping of the objects of the same type and with objects of different types. See you in the next video. Bye.